Well, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can see my screen all right. You can now. I've had a little wake up. And hey, Tony, how are you up in Chicago, mate? They had a cool fall night in Chicago. Good. Uh, and David with us here says he can uh, hear you good. Thank you, mate. That's great. Okay, save me asking the question. Wonderful. Okay, so let me see what we've got. Oh, lots of people coming in. We're coming in a little bit late here today, uh, but we have uh, all our usual friends here with us. Glad, glad to have you folks. Uh, Anthony D from Chicago used to be a broker. He's a private trader now. David, of course, Florian, important to have Florian with us. Uh, Jim uh, from uh, uh, London, uh, from Hull, actually, H-U-L-L, Hull, uh, a famous river port um, up in the northwest of England. Uh, he's a good tutorial. Good to have you with us, mate. Joe's with us, of course. Leo up in the uh, Canada there. Uh, he's a tutorial guy. So is, uh, Mike, so is Jeff Peter and the other Peter. Jerry, yes, glad to have you with us. Uh, Millie, is it? It's Millie or Miller? I put my glasses a bit high. It's Mike. Oh, Mike, of course. Good, good to have you with us. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, good. Uh, Partho, who's been very ill lately, uh, and he's uh, recovering now. Uh, Rob's with us. He's a Daniel Code tutorial returning guy. He's starting his second tutorial on Monday. Vicky's with us, of course. Wonderful to have you with us, Vicky, and uh, many others coming in a little bit late, but we have much to talk about today, folks, so uh, let us uh, move it along. Uh, and uh, here we are. Great. Okay, so uh, you know uh, part of this by now, probably by heart. Markets are rational, orderly, and sometimes predictable. Uh, and um, markets are your friend. I'm trying to get this message across that markets are simply there to provide you with your wealth and your happiness and your health, of course. Uh, you'll find you'll be much more healthy if you're regularly winning at your trading uh, and your equity curve is marching up as it should. Uh, that makes you very healthy and uh, wealth, of course, uh, helps grease the wheels of uh, life a bit, does it not? Uh, anyway, uh, glad to have all of you uh, here, folks. Uh, and here we are today. Uh, I promised you that uh, we would have Mark L. There's a typo there. His name is Mark. Uh, he's a Daniel Kerr tutorial graduate from October 2016. Um, and uh, it was uh, soon after uh, I started teaching uh, trading time. Uh, until then, I was treated, uh, only teaching trading price. Um, and um, I finally cracked the code on uh, time and I started teaching it. And Mark was one of the early uh, tutorial guys. Um, and uh, I said to him when he'd done most of his tutorial, I'd like you to do some paper trading for me. In fact, I'd like you to do a lot of paper trading. I'd like you to do a complete year, uh, any market you like. Uh, and <laughs> uh, of course, uh, any market you like. Uh, he was too clever for me. He knew what he wanted to do, uh, trade. Uh, and he picked natural gas uh, for 2016. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, he's going to tell us all about it. So Mark's with us now. Mark, hello. Uh, good evening to you, my friend. Thank you for being with us. Uh, you're going to be uh, uh, sitting quietly for a while. We, uh, first of all, we're going to answer a, a question from Mr. Hawkins, uh, Steve Hawkins, uh, who I think might be here with us today. Uh, but... Uh, <coughs> I try to just put everything together in the way that you can understand it. And when I get a question uh, like this one uh, from Steve, um, uh, it's clear to me that I haven't put it all together. So uh, I shall uh, try a bit more. And uh, what he's asking is, he said, we'd like, like seeing your charts with all the results. Uh, what would be better for us would be the thought process you go through to get to a trade idea, how you enter your orders for these trades, and manage those trades, just a thought. Well, uh, that just a thought, Steve, pretty well uh, covers the whole basis of trading, doesn't it? From beginning to end, from life till death. Uh, but uh, we'll see what we can do because uh, trading uh, is a wonderful thing, particularly futures and Forex. Um, futures is uh, the closest thing you can get to a zero sum game. You've got to uh, pay the broker a, a fee, which has got smaller and smaller as technology in the years have marched on. It's uh, pretty reasonable now. 
uh, and has been for some years. But apart from that, it's a zero-sum game. It's simply your wits against the other guys. And uh, the reality is that uh, the average person trading uh, is not uh, terribly well skilled at it. Uh, they haven't taken the time to learn. Uh, I say they're trained or untrained. Well, they've, your opposition is almost certainly untrained. So uh, if you're trained, you can expect to have uh, a fabulous uh, trading career. Uh, but let's just see if we can uh, put this stuff together uh, for uh, Steve's sake here and be some of you as well. So uh, we have two separate lines of trading, basically. Uh, we have trading price and trading time. And they can be put together, but actually they work better separately. Um, and Daniel Code is entirely different to anything you've ever seen or heard of in trading futures and forex. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, come from anything else. It's all of its own. Uh, it's derived entirely uh, with Daniel's Code, uh, which is some ancient writing, historical writing on time, how time moves. Uh, and by applying some basic uh, schoolboy math, really, uh, which we can all do with a calculator these days, uh, we get further, first of all, from uh, that uh, 15 lines of Daniel's Code, the first thing that comes out of it is the rule of eighths, uh, which is terribly important. Uh, until uh, decimalization, which is over 50 years ago now, uh, stocks, all stocks were quoted in sixteenths and eighths. Um, and some of them still are. Uh, the old uh, Board of Trade market, uh, grains in particular, treasuries, uh, they're still quoted in eighths and multiples of eighths. Uh, grains work on a quarter, two eighths. Uh, T-bonds work on uh, 30 seconds, four eighths. Uh, so it still goes on and on. But when we're looking at Daniel Code time, at 29.66 days, and the Daniel Code lexicon 29.6 is time. Uh, and uh, whenever we're working off these historic documents sort of thing, it's very easy to just get carried away with it all. And you can get it to believe anything you want to believe. So we're, we're very much harsher than that. We say that we have to have some external method uh, of testing whether these numbers we're getting uh, out of this uh, bit of mathematics we're doing uh, are real and what we're always looking for is something in modern scientific terms that we can test against uh, our um, uh, data that's being produced and of course the annual code time at 29.6 is uh, very very good because a synodic month is 29.5 um, and a synodic month is literally the average length of a calendar month uh, so you know normally with the uh, Gregorian calendar, we have uh, 30 days, 31 days, 28, and sometimes 29. But the average of every month is 29.5. And uh, these time cycles are not as rigid as you would expect uh, because uh, the uh, Earth, which is creating these time cycles, and if we talk about days, that's literally one rotation of the Earth on its own axis. That's what a day is. Um, and uh, a synodic month <coughs> is a grouping uh, of sun, moon and earth in a particular pattern uh, and it then moves away from that and when it comes back to that pattern again, uh, that is the length of a synodic month. Uh, but uh, all of these objects that we're talking about, earth and moon in particular, uh, they're spherical but they're not perfect spheres um, and their uh, uh, orbit is... Uh, uh, not perfect either. It's a, an oval, but it's an oval with a few little movements up and down. And in fact, uh, in uh, 2001, um, NASA Jet Laboratories calculated the length of the various synodic months for the whole of 2001, and it ranged from 29.3 to 29.7. Um, and more modern years, it's, a, it's the same thing. Anywhere within that 29.1 uh, to 29.7. Uh, is uh, acceptable as a length of a synodic month. Um, and uh, time itself uh, moves uh, on a formula. And that formula is time times and a half. In other words, time repeats, doubles and halves. Uh, and if you're really interested in time, uh, there's an article on our website. Uh, it's called The Other Way. 
Um, it's an analysis of uh, the S and P by time dominant time cycles. Uh, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty solid read. It's pretty heavy stuff, but if you're really into time, that's where you'll learn the real basis of it all. So, I started searching for Daniel Code in about 2000, uh, and I did that because I was mad keen on trading futures. Um, I travelled uh, to many places around the world, Europe, America mainly, uh, to do uh, seminars uh, with uh, all the leading gurus. Um, uh, and uh, frankly, I was disappointed. Uh, and what I found was that uh, never bet against the example. The example always wins. But for me, at least, uh, and this is no criticism of the uh, guys who were sharing their knowledge with me, uh, but for me, at least, it wasn't producing the sort of nice, smooth, rising equity curve uh, that I thought was uh, absolutely essential uh, to use uh, to run trading as a uh, business. Uh, so that started uh, in 2000. About in 2003, I found the first thread of it. Um, and every year since then has shown me more and refined my understanding. And the great test, which I think I showed you last uh, session we had, or maybe the one before, we've actually had four in a row here. Uh, so there's a, a bit of water under the bridge. Um, but I showed you how we could take Daniel Code time cycles uh, and simply put them on charts as price cycles. In other words, the time cycles are normally presented uh, as a vertical lines. Uh, and if you take exactly those same time cycles, but put them on as horizontal lines, you get these amazing Daniel Code price numbers, which give us the basis for our target recognition. Um, and you can find those at members charts on the Daniel Code website. Uh, they're uh, updated every weekend. Uh, and on Wednesday evening, uh, and more often if necessary, sometimes uh, when there's terrific volatility, <coughs> I'm actually uh, updating them every day. Um, so um, as well as that, uh, whatever I tell you, you can go back and have a look, uh, go to Daniel Code website and click on the chart archives tab. Uh, so these members charts, they are limited to members for the first 30 days after they're posted. After that, they automatically go to that tab of uh, members chart archives. Uh, and you will see there over 40,000 members charts that I've created since the Daniel Code uh, went public in late 2007. Uh, and you will be hard pressed to find a market that's ever turned anywhere without prior target recognition. So. Uh, creating the Daniel Code price charts is the first step, uh, Steve. Once we've done those, uh, remember these are time cycles from Daniel's Code, simply expressed as price, uh, but all markets are ruled by the Daniel Code in all time frames. Uh, we have uh, guys occasionally who are interested in short-term trading, uh, and for those that you are, um, let's see if I go back where I was, Uh, am I going the right way or the wrong way? Uh, probably the wrong way. Let's see. Here we are. We were back here somewhere. Right. So here is the next one. Um, so um, the use of, uh, a pro as I was saying, I showed you what happened when we put uh, the time targets on our chart as price. And we're then looking for this phenomenon called target recognition. Uh, which can happen at the bar high or the bar low or on the close. All of them are valid. Um, and we need for target recognition one of those three points to have been stopped at the Daniel Code number. And we make that uh, question, has it stopped? Has it identified the number? Has it found target recognition? We make that pretty tough. In other words, we say that the market has to find that number within 0.1%, not 1% 1 of price, one-tenth of 1% 1 of the price that the uh, market is trying to identify. When it does that, that's target recognition. And target recognition generally lasts for two days. Sometimes it'll last for three days. Um, and you'll very soon, if you can start looking at the Daniel Code members chart, you'll very, very soon learn to pick that up automatically. So uh, that's how we start with uh, trading price. Uh, but price on its own uh, tells us nothing, uh, unless it has the Daniel Code 
price numbers on it, it's meaningless. Um, and price generally for folks who don't really understand about Daniel Code, and remember the vast majority of the world's never heard of the Daniel Code. We're a, you know, um, a, an ant uh, at the end of a very large product. Uh, but uh, folks spend a lot of time and massive amounts of money searching out, trying to create price-derived studies. I was speaking to a chap the other day who uh, works for a, a business uh, that does nothing except take uh, trading, uh, take price mainly, they're mainly on stocks, um, and trying to create studies uh, that have some forecasting benefit. Um, and they've got 74 people on staff. I mean, they've got a different decent wages bill every month. Uh, so someone must be paying for all this stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, they're locked onto it. And no one more locked onto it than, than um, options guys. They're absolutely endless search, research, digging holes anywhere they can uh, to try and find uh, that little edge, which uh, they don't. Uh, so, uh, basics of studies, you, you know, stochastics, ADX, MACD, RSI, etc. They all work sometimes, but uh, uh, the great W.D. Gann uh, summed it up very well when he said, stochastics can remain oversold much longer than you can remain solvent. Uh, and it's so true. It's a very rough tool. I use it a little bit, but it's a very rough tool. But our options traders, they're the cream of the searches for correlations. Uh, the depth and expense of finding and maintaining these studies and, and the work that's done by all the big institutions as well, it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. And it's almost entirely worthless. Uh, you know, you'll see people get uh, hung up with this and they'll put on another study and another study and another study. And I, I sometimes see people, you know, come to me saying, God, help me. Uh, and they've got half a dozen different studies on there. Um, and uh, three of them are reinforcing some of the others and the other three are contradicting them. Uh, and uh, as they say, you finish up with... Um, uh, uh, paralysis from analysis. Uh, you just don't know what to do. The missing link to all of these studies is time. And when you see what we do, once you understand it, it is so simple. Uh, it is just sitting there for you every day. It's there. Uh, you just have to look at members charts. Um, and for the markets we don't do members charts for, we create the signals for you anyway. Um, so uh, if you look at members charts, what I've done there is simply use the time cycles from Daniel's code <coughs> as price. We make no adjustment at all in that process. Um, and the Daniel code time cycles, bang, they just, uh, normally they're vertically uh, represented. You just put them on representing horizontally. Uh, and when we're looking for target recognition at those numbers, we require it to be incredibly precise. It's achieved when the bar high, low, or the close finds our price target with a variance of just 0.01% of the price target. Not 1%, one tenth of 1%. And that's actually very hard for markets to do. Uh, and think about this way in terms of probabilities, because everything we do in trading uh, is based on probabilities. If you don't have Daniel Code target recognition, the probability of a turn in the next three days is about four to six percent. <laughs> in other words, uh, once we have target recognition, uh, the odds of a turn in the next three days uh, are massively reinforced and the probabilities go up into the 90s. Uh, and once we have that target recognition, we require the market to show us that it agrees with our analysis. And markets do this by going to our calculated entry signals. For every Daniel Code uh, price or time signal, there's a point at which it must be entered. And we don't, when we get everything set up and the market's roaring up and we get a sell signal, we don't sell there. Uh, that would be hubris and you'll uh, get your tail handed to you. We then require the market to show us that it agrees with us, which it may do or it may not do. Um, and that's why you'll see uh, that very often we have signals uh, that are not elected. Uh, and the question is, why do you keep putting these signals up? Well, the reality is if you understand Daniel Code, every one of those signals, the ones that are not elected, they tell you where to put your protective stop. Day after day after day, they tell you where to put your protective stop. And nothing is more important than that. And here we are.
the next thing uh, Steve asked for is how do you manage your trade? Well, uh, there are fixed rules uh, and there's specific requirements to trigger each rule. Everything in the Daniel Code, uh, it's a light switch solution. The signal is either on or it's off. If the signal is on, the trade is either elected or it's ignored. Okay, one or the other, always the same way. The biggest problem in all of trading is that we always need to have a really high probability assumption about trend. And in truth, it takes two bars to determine current trend. But we require you to make that determination on one bar. Uh, so uh, it's tough. Uh, it's tough and it's immediate, isn't it? Uh, but we uh, aim to be always in the market. Uh, and uh, the purpose of that is in reliance on the statistical probability of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, etc., still being with us in the future. Uh, that may sound to you as a fairly uh, funny thing to say or maybe a stupid thing to say. But the reality is that futures markets in particular, and Forex as well, they guarantee that extremely high probability because they can... Uh, increase or decrease volatility in the various trading instruments. In other words, um, US dollar index uh, as an example. Uh, when I started trading, which admittedly uh, was a long time ago, uh, the US uh, dollar index uh, had uh, two decimal points. It might even been one decimal point. <laughs> if you look at it now, it has three decimal points. And if you simply add a five to turn it, uh, a half to turn it from a two decimal point to a three decimal point, you increase the volatility massively. And these products are designed to have sufficient volatility that they are tradable. Remember, the purpose of futures markets and pretty well all markets uh, is for the supplier and the user uh, to have a marketplace where they can react uh, and a marketplace that will give a true determination of price at that time. And that's fine, but there's not that many of those uh, folks. Uh, and it's the massive number of traders like us who are speculators. That's what we are, speculators. We're speculating on the price. That's what gives the liquidity uh, to the market so that any time uh, in most of our markets, uh, there's always a couple of bids and a couple of uh, offers on the table, sometimes many more. Uh, but it's us as speculators that provide the liquidity, uh, the oil that keeps the futures and forex uh, market churning. So uh, you know that these markets always have to be volatile enough that they are um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, attractive, uh, uh, more than attractive, um, for traders uh, it, with their trading uh, st st statistics or methods or what have you. Uh, markets have to have that inherent volatility or no one would trade. And if no one trades, there's no money for the CME. Uh, and uh, if no one trades, there's no money uh, at the New York Stock Exchange for all those lovely brokers. Uh, to pad their uh, fat wallets with. So there's, and I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but there's more than an implied uh, understanding that these markets that we trade will always be volatile enough uh, to give astute traders uh, a profitable edge. Um, and that's what we do. Uh, so uh, I want to show you a, a run of charts, uh, Steve, you and the other guys. I've been talking about target recognition, but it hasn't uh, sunk in with you guys how important that is. That's the preeminent clue to any market turn. Uh, as I've just told you, if you don't have target recognition, your chances of getting a turn in the next three days are around about four, maybe at times six percent. Very, very small statistically. Once you have target recognition, then your probability the results go flying the other way. Uh, and uh, I've added in uh, the Aussie US dollar chart here. Uh, it's not the favorite chart to show you what I am showing you, but it's, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, I guess it can't be any better than that uh, because you can see those uh, up bars, the final up bar uh, 
which came on uh, the uh, 6th of this month, that high was 65.23. Have a look at our blue line numbers there, 65.22. One tick, one tick variant from target. I mean, that's less than the width of a human hair. It's like nothing. Uh, and it's that perfection of recognition which is so hard for markets to do that it is in no way random. It's very specified. That's what gives you the setup uh, to have uh, a turn. Uh, so <clears throat> there are two sorts of turns. There's a turn that enters against the apparent trend uh, or a turn that gets you back with the apparent trend. Um, and they have different rules. Uh, but a great many people don't actually ever trade the turns that take you against the apparent trend. <clears throat> and I think that's a shocking waste. Um, here's one here. Clearly the trend was up uh, going into the uh, high. Uh, uh, on the uh, three days ago, uh, and um, uh, there was a, a Daniel Code TO3 and a blue line sell signal. Well, the blue line sell signals are, or blue line buy signals either, the blue line signals per se, uh, are the most important, the strongest signal that uh, we create. And uh, I always want to take those. I want to trade both ways. Uh, I don't want to be sitting there waiting for the perfect setup that comes once or twice a month. That's a waste of time and you're not making any money. Uh, if you have the Daniel Code signals, they're there all the time, take them. Put your order on. Remember, uh, of course, that uh, that's not the end game. The end game is nothing will happen until you, you specify where you want the market to elect is the expression we use. To elect your trade, you might say fill your trade. Uh, we say elect, uh, and if, unless the market does that to show us that it agrees with our assumptions about the market's position, uh, then you don't get a fill. So this is uh, the Russell, pretty easy. Uh, been interesting to watch how the uh, equities have all been out of sync with each other. Uh, this market turned over uh, four days ago. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, uh, S&P was still up. S&P was weakly hammering away uh, at a high, as I'll show you. Uh, and um, uh, that's uh, what creates the signal. Have a look at this. Uh, this is the US dollar index yesterday before, uh, not uh, this is Wednesday's data, uh, the last bit of data on it. And you can see what you've got. The last bar you've got there is a key reversal bar. Key reversal bar is a, it's not actually a key reversal bar, it's just a reversal bar. A key reversal bar would require the bar to open within the range of the previous bar, which it's done, make a new high for the move, which it's done, uh, then reverse, which it's done, and close below its own open, which it's done, and below the previous day's close, which it has not. So it's a reversal bar at Daniel Code target. It's not a key reversal bar. but Look what happens. You get an outside bar. The market has to go down until it finds support. And it has to do that because of the reversal bar from the Daniel Code 105.710 number. That's why you got the market go down, first of all. Then it reversed. What happens with an outside bar is for all of our signals, we have to assume that the market is neutral, is in a neutral balance at the time. And of course, markets rarely are actually in a neutral balance. Um, but uh, what happens is that there's a new momentum to sell that uh, reversal bar, which it goes, it does, it runs down into Daniel Code support and it reverses and a new power comes into the market. And that new power is the existing buying order that sort of got set aside yesterday, but it comes back with a rush. Off it goes. Does this look random to you? Look where it ended this bar. I mean, I don't know how much more accurate any of this stuff uh, can ever be, uh, but today's high uh, is 105.830. Uh, where's the red line there you can see? 105.840. This market moves in 0 0.005. That's two ticks variant. That's perfection. And you get it all the time. It's always happening. Amazing stuff. Now, this is the S&P. It had target recognition uh, on the uh, Tuesday. See the close there? 
uh, right at that uh, red black line 439650. Um, in fact, it's closed slightly above that uh, black line, uh, which implies that the up of the swing uh, that is just above this market is going to be taken out fairly promptly. Uh, that's an assumption. Uh, we'll wait to see if it happens, in fact. But you had target recognition, and then the very next day, it was still giving target recognition. It just moved up a couple of ticks. Uh, you got a TO3 sell signal, uh, and that, uh, Steve, uh, is what caused today's sell. Uh, and today's sell is not just an ordinary sell. Um, have a look uh, where the high of today's bar is, 44.13. Where's the red line? 44.13. 0.25, one tick variance, one tick, nothing, nada, niet, everything you can think of. Incidentally, for those of you guys who are running your own charts, remember that its favourite trick this market has, it'll, it'll switch from a bar high-low to a close-only chart. So if you're trying to find some support for this present bar, uh, change the high-low bar uh, to the close only bar uh, and it will all become um, a bit clearer for you. Okay, uh, gold, here was gold at target recognition. Uh, you, you see you had target recognition uh, on the bar uh, that went down into the blue line uh, and that was uh, the 8th uh, of this month uh, and the close of that bar, 1967.8, uh, 19... 57.8, I do desperately need to get a new set of glasses. What's the blue line at? 1958.2. Four ticks variance, that's it. That's target recognition. Then we await to get the signal that the market agrees with us. And it certainly is trying to agree with us. That has now given, uh, that actually is a, a key reversal bar. It's opened within the range of the previous bar. It's made a new low for the move. It's then reversed. It's closed above its own open and above the previous day's close. That's a key reversal bar, uh, which is very often a directional indicator. Okay, like that, didn't we? What about this? This is copper. Same thing I've been uh, hitting at, Steve. It's target recognition is the first step. <clears throat> With absent target recognition, it's very, very improbable that you're going to get a term. So right here, here's copper. Uh, and uh, the target recognition bar came on Monday. Uh, the sixth and the close of that bar was 371.90. 371.90. Have a look at the red line underneath this. Underneath it, 372.02.03. The high of that bar uh, was uh, 372.56. Uh, and what have we got up there? 372.36. Uh, and this was 56.26. Well, the close was target recognition. Uh, and uh, you had your sell signal, Daniel Code TO3 and the blue line sell signal, the stronger signal we create. Down, it's gone. What's happened today? It's found perfect support um, at the low of 361.35, 361.35. And you can see the red line at 361.15 and the blue line at 361. It's all very, very accurate, this stuff, isn't it? It's absolutely quite amazing. Uh, this is natural gas, which has been having some turmoils. You can see some decent-sized gaps here. It's been having a bit of a think about what way it's supposed to be going. Um, and what we've actually had here is we've got a TO3 buy signal uh, on... Uh-huh. Uh, the uh, close of uh, November the 2nd, that was Thursday last week. So we had a TO3 buy signal there that was elected. You can see the very next day it went up um, and it ran up to the uh, Daniel Code black line with a high of 3576. The black line was at 3579, same thing, three ticks variance is nothing. Uh, and that turned it and it started to move down and it gapped down. This is a flip me sell signal. The trade has been elected, that's the first requirement. Uh, and the uh, protective stop uh, on that buy 
is two ticks below the setup bar low. Daniel code signals are so powerful and accurate that if that failure point, the protective stop on the original entry, if that is breached within three days, it's a new buy or sell signal as the case may be. So I put a line on this chart to show you exactly where you got short. Uh, and the market obviously knew about that because it got past that and then rallied back up almost exactly to that point. Um, and since then it's been uh, wandering down quietly. Uh, same thing, uh, it starts with target recognition, which gives you the signal. A failure of any signal in the Daniel Code lexicon leads to another trade. Uh, that's part of that management. Have a look at this, this is soybeans had some huge volatility going up, massive couple of bars going up, um, and uh, ran into the uh, blue line uh, at 1384, uh, correct six. There he is. Uh, and that high was 1384, correct two. That little arrowhead, incidentally, it's called a correct. Uh, this is a rather old fashioned way of uh, pricing. This is the border trade method that held up the um, uh, merger with the CME for so long because the border trade brokers wouldn't abandon it. Uh, and it's based on the rule of eight, uh, so it's fine. Uh, but there was your high uh, on the Monday uh, at uh, 1384 correct four. Look at your blue line, 1384 correct six. That's one tick. Uh, this is grains. It moves in two ticks. Is it? Uh, uh, two correct is one tick or a quarter. So you've got perfect target recognition sitting there looking at you. What happens? Put your order on, see if the market agrees uh, with what we've said, and it does. Uh, and you can see that nice big uh, sell off today. Uh, the uh, low of that uh, setup bar uh, was uh, 1361 correct zero. Down it's gone. Nice trade. Easy enough. It started with target recognition. The first thing is target recognition, then the creation of the signal, then the execution. Okay, I think that's probably going to fill us up pretty close, but I've got uh, Mark waiting to talk to us, uh, and he might be dying of boredom or old age up there. Now, it won't be much longer. Uh, uh, Mark, here's just another case uh, of target recognition. Uh, here's your Daniel Code blue line. Uh, this market has <coughs> been staggeringly. Uh, good to us uh, all year, wonderful. Uh, and uh, it uh, turned in its high uh, on uh, Wednesday, 115.12. Uh, there's a blue line, 115.8, that's a uh, four ticks variance. Uh, and there's also a red line at 115.16, uh, which is, um, the high of this bar was tw uh, correct, 12, four ticks variance. That's target recognition. Your sell order is on there. I post them every day. They're under the TO3 and the TO3 plus banners at the website. The entry point is two ticks below the low of the setup bar. And if that's achieved, we're going to be short, which is exactly what happened here. Uh, and uh, very nice uh, it was. Uh, as we move to the next chart, and you can see exactly what happened uh, in T-bonds today. <coughs> okay, trade was elected, down it went. Now, uh, sugar, this is a bit of a tricky one. There was the uh, TO3 sell signal came at target recognition three days ago. Uh, that created a TO3 sell signal, uh, which was um, elected. Here he is in living color that was elected uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, down it went on Wednesday, uh, and this is how it looked uh, at Wednesday night. Notice the target recognition. There's two things to notice there. First of all, you've got target recognition at the close. The close of Wednesday's bar is 27.21. Look at the chart, you can see a red line at 27.21. There's another one at 27.20. So zero target recognition. Now have a look at the high of this bar. This is Wednesday's high. It's hard for you to see, but there's a little green scrap there. In other words, that's telling us there's a gap. And that little green dot up there is how I've got the <coughs> charts program to tell me when there's a gap. Uh, so markets hate a gap. Markets always try to close a gap. You can see what happened uh, with a much uh, bigger 
uh, gap than that, uh, which we had on, uh, where is that lot here? Here you are, that gap, Thursday, uh, October the 19th. Uh, that's in that last cluster. Uh, you had a gap down uh, and left a uh, this part right here, folks. You can see where my cursor is. <coughs> left a gap what happened the very next day the two gaps down two days both with gaps down what happened the very next day snap back reversal close the gap what happened in this market here snap back reversal today close the gap now you wouldn't have got a price buy signal on this market it was too fast but you got your uh, flip me signal but it's a long way away but if you understood Daniel Code Time, which is our premier trading system, that gave you a buy uh, at uh, Wednesday's high to be executed today. Uh, and that's what happened, just what you saw. So that's how you trade price uh, and answered all your questions, I hope, Steve. Uh, the better way even than that is trading time. As you've seen here, it's pretty much magic. Uh, and the Daniel Code time charts uh, and your tutorials, if you want to learn about trading time, yeah, creating uh, time signals and trading, you have to do a Daniel Code tutorial. It's the only way you can learn. Um, and uh, you will see that it's uh, just as sensational uh, as it looks right there. Okay, and if you like that, folks, I can teach it to you. Uh, and uh, you can do your Daniel Code trading tutorial. Uh, the link is on the uh, page here. Uh, and that will let you take you through all the syllabus for uh, learn to trade. So uh, if you're interested in the Daniel Kuhn trading tutorial, I can certainly make you into a super trader. Uh, here's the link to see the curriculum uh, and give yourself a serious present. Once you know how to trade, you've got it forever for the whole of your life. It's a wonderful thing. Email me today uh, to reserve your spot, jneedham at thedanielcode.com jneedham at thedanielcode.com um, and if you are one of the first three people to apply and can start your tutorial uh, before the 20th of this month uh, I'll be happy to give you a $1,000 discount uh, and you need to be quick to get it. Well uh, as I promised you uh, at our last session we've got Mark L uh, with us today and uh, Mark is um, an historic character in uh, Daniel Code law because uh, he was the first, if not the first, very nearly the first uh, student to ever learn how to create and trade time signals. Uh, so he was the first student of Daniel Code time trading, which has been, uh, for those of you who know, uh, an absolute revolution. Uh, so good evening uh, to you, Mark. Uh, delighted to have you here. And uh, I'm just about to show people why uh, you were such an important student because uh, believe it or not this is a copy of your spreadsheet all the way back to 2016 and at that time uh, I asked you to do some paper trading for me and I asked you to do quite a lot of paper trading like a whole year a whole calendar year and uh, you did and you chose natural gas uh, which is why ever since then every Daniel Code student has had to learn to paper trade natural gas but this is your spreadsheet uh, or the summary part of it uh, and uh, you turned up uh, an astonishing $32,380 profit over the calendar year 2016 in natural gas so uh, that was amazing uh, and uh, you can look at that as 32380 I'd point out to folks that the margin at that time was 32,000, as best I recall. So this number 3, here is... 3,200, 3, 3,200, thank you, Mark, correct as always. Yes. So this number here is looking like a 1,000% on margin, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, but paper trading is not real-time trading. There are all sorts of hundreds of different issues uh, that come into real-time uh, trading, including... Um, psychological issues about uh, fear and greed and the things that drive markets but anyway for a man who's uh, spent a lot of time and mastered it all greatly uh, I'll now introduce you formally to Mark um, and uh, Mark uh, so good of you to be with us today uh, and uh, this is your uh, copy of your spreadsheet and I'd like you to share with the folks if you would a bit of your 
uh, experience that you had uh, with Daniel Code and uh, through the uh, tutorial and uh, onward from there. So over to you, Mark. All right, thank you, John. And it's definitely an honor to uh, to be able to talk to uh, to your audience about my uh, trading experience. You know, John, a lot of times will start his webinars when he goes through and he introduces the uh, the different people or recognizes the different people that are in attendance. And he'll say something along the lines that wouldn't be a party without Mark L. Well, Mark L is uh, here for the interview, so let's get the party started. So what I really hope to do tonight is is just to be able to encourage, you know, even if it's one person that I can encourage here, you know, to, to take this journey. Um, you know, as I first got into trading, you know, it wasn't very good. Um, stock trading is, you know, a, a lot of John's... Uh, you know, clientele, I believe, probably got started trading stocks. And it was always, you know, a little bit of success, but then, you know, I would end up giving it all back. So, you know, it was the proverbial one step forward, one step back, two steps forward, two steps back. I could never really start to build my equity curve. And, uh, you know, that was pretty frustrating. Um, so, you know, I just happened by chance you know, to come across the Daniel Code, which, uh, you know, I'll be taking you through my, my journey here over the last, uh, believe it or not, you know, seven years since I first became the Daniel Code, aware of the Daniel Code. So, you know, I'm a pretty avid user of uh, Twitter. I believe uh, it goes, uh, it's called X now, which I'm not really sure what that's all about, but uh, I'll always refer to it as Twitter. And there was somebody that I was following on there. I won't say the gentleman's name. I still follow him to this day. And, uh, you know, he's he's pretty active on Twitter, but he had a comment on there, a tweet back in uh, probably, you know, May of 2016, April of 2016, somewhere around that time frame where he his tweet was the high is in for the S&P 500 at, you know, 2100 or whatever it was at the time, according to something called the Daniel Code. So, you know, obviously, you know, as, as we know, that person wasn't familiar with the Daniel Code because John Needham would never make a proclamation like that and say that the high is in or, uh, you know, give a, a number of that specificity, um, you know, on uh, one of his webinars or wherever that individual happened to hear it. But what it did is, you know, it intrigued me, you know, as a person of faith, you know, when I heard it was called the Daniel Code, I was very, uh, you know, intrigued by that. And, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, it came from the Bible made me even more curious. So, you know, quick Google search, and then my Daniel Code journey was underway. Um, I started to consume every bit of material that I could find on the website. So, you know, John still has articles in there going back to, you know, probably 2007, 2008, somewhere in that time frame. I encourage anyone to go on the Daniel Code website and consume those. All of his webinars are on there, other videos. And, you know, I, I learned something from each one of those. And then I started, you know, attending the new webinars and, you know, I would learn something every single webinar, something new. And even to this day, you know, seven years later, seven and a half years later, really, since I started attending the webinars, I still learn something new in every webinar. Um, the one thing on there that really uh, caught my attention, though, was a recording that John had done when he was in the United States called Live at the Springs. And at the time, I had a pretty long commute every day back and forth to work. You know, it was an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so. So John became my uh, travel companion. I would listen to Live at the Springs almost every day, going to work, coming home from work. And, you know, I would listen to it repetition and, you know, start to memorize some of the things that were in it. And, uh, you know, I have to say John was a pretty good travel companion. That's for sure. He, uh, he made that commute seem a lot shorter than it actually was. So, you know, as I started to learn more about the Daniel Code, um, you know, I started to work on my wife a little bit to try and warm her up to the idea of attending a webinar, or I'm sorry, of attending a live session if John were ever to uh, come to the U.S. to attend a tutorial. Well, you know, before uh, it ever got to that point, the video tutorials came onto the scene, and, you know, that was just exciting to me because there's no travel and there was no waiting more importantly you know i didn't have to wait for john to come to the united states i could take it you know relatively quickly so you know i looked at the price it wasn't cheap but you know there was just something burning inside of me 
that I knew I had to take that tutorial regardless of the cost. So, you know, I was hearing things about TO3, TO3+, plus, you know, this four seal, fifth seal, things that John would talk about on the webinars. And, you know, I would sit there and try and, uh, you know, figure out how these lines came into being. And, you know, it's like, uh, I don't think I'm going to get that unless I take the uh, tutorial. And I'm, I'm not really going to, you know, get half of what I need to, you know, if I don't take the tutorial. So, you know, as John mentioned, uh, you know, I'm not 100% sure I was the first one to take a video tutorial. But I think, you know, I was either, you know, one or two somewhere in that area. And uh, definitely the... Uh, the tutorial experience, it met all of my expectations, bar none. Um, you know, when it started off, you know, maybe I was a little starstruck. You know, I've said before, John's a bit of a celebrity in my book, at being my uh, travel companion for as long as he was. So, uh, you know, we got past that stage pretty early in the uh, tutorial, and then we jumped into it. And, you know, for John to explain to me, you know, how all of this evolved from, you know, the book of Daniel, two numbers in the book of Daniel is, you know, just amazing. And it's still amazing to me today. You know, John and his webinars, a lot of times will show, you know, the uh, target recognition and, um, you know, how the uh, the markets always turn at Daniel code numbers. And, you know, I'll put those on my own charts and, you know, whether it's John showing it on his webinar, me on my own charts, always amazed at the you know, how accurate the, the Daniel code is and, and how markets truly do turn at those numbers. So, you know, a little bit about my experience during the tutorial. You know, I have to say that John, he is extremely patient. He allows you to ask questions. You get to set the pace. You know, if you come across anything that just isn't quite clicking, doesn't make sense, you know, you can call time out and, uh, you know, go back over it and, and John will cover it, you know, for as long as uh, is necessary until the light goes on. Um, the tutorial was also my uh, first exposure to trading time. And, you know, as John mentioned, being one of the first people uh, that he taught time to, I was just blown away. Never in my wildest imagination, you know, did I think that there would be something, you know, where you could trade time, you know, growing up, you know, trading stocks, everything. And in that world for me was all about price. And then, you know, learning about time, it just blew me away. Um, you know, I'll also say the video sessions, they were perfect for my learning style. Um, I'm sure that, you know, a live tutorial that, you know, that people have taken those, get a lot out of those. I'm sure I would as well. I've told John that, you know, if you ever were to come back to the United States and do a live tutorial, I would make every effort to attend, if nothing else, you know, just to shake his hand and thank him for everything. But obviously, I would get much more out of it than, uh, than just that. But for my learning style, the video sessions were perfect. And what I would do is, you know, the, the initial sessions, they're spread out over four different sessions. So what I would do before the second session is I would go back and watch the video of the first session. Before the third session, I go back and watch the second and so on. And there are always things in there that I would pick up that I thought that I got, you know, that made sense to me during the, the live tutorial. But when I bet, went back and reviewed it on video, I was like, oh, I didn't quite get that the way that I thought I did. And, you know, there were some cringe moments as well where I would, you know, I was so adamant as, a, as the training was going on live that I thought that I had it. And then, uh, you know, watching the uh, the replay, the, the video, I would say, oh, gee, I, I didn't quite get that. You know, the light didn't come on. And then I was able to review those with John in the next live session. And, you know, John had a uh, saying in Live at the Springs where he would say, is this stuff frying your brain? And he said that in my tutorial. And I have to admit that the first time that uh, we started going through the charts and learning time, it was definitely frying my brain. So being able to slow things down and review the videos and come back and then review what I had seen and you know what I had learned, again, was uh, just extremely valuable um, for my learning style. So. You know, we got through those four sessions and, uh, you know, fast forward now. And I set up a uh, uh, an account where I could do, you know, live paper trading. So it was, you know, it's actually live. It was as if I was trading real money, but it was a paper account. And since I was a stock trader, you know, there are a lot of things that I still had to learn. I had to learn how to use the uh, software. I was with uh, still Elm. I use interactive brokers. So I had to learn how to use their software, how to, you know, do the order entry features of it. You know, I needed to learn, um, 
you know, the different order triggers, orders and contract rollovers, just, you know, generally how futures work. So, you know, I started doing that, started putting on trades the way that John, you know, had taught me. But, you know, I have to admit, I got off to a rough start. You know, John labeled me, he said, you know, you're a nervous trader. And I was, you know, I was jumping at profits. You know, I was uh, staring at charts all day. And if I would be up a hundred dollars, I would say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and take that hundred dollar profit. And then turn around and watch, you know, the trade would have yielded, you know, $1,000, $1,500, something like that. And, you know, even though it was paper money, I was still jumping, you know, and taking those profits. And then I would also switch markets. If I had a couple of losing trades, you know, let's say that I was uh, trading wheat and I had a couple of losing trades or I was trading Japanese yen, something like that. I would say, well, this market isn't working. I'd go to something else. So even though the mechanics of the system I was executing, I didn't really, you know, wasn't really executing the way that John had taught me. Um, you know, at that time as well, I was very anxious to start trading with real money. You know, my wife would say things like, you know, you're spending so much time with this, you know, you paid for the tutorial, you know, you're up there all day, when are you gonna start to make real money? So, you know, I started to feel that pressure that I needed to start trading with real money. So. You know, I, I let John know that and uh, his words I will never forget were, I can't tell you what to do with your money, but you'll lose your ass the way you're trading. Uh, Roger that. He didn't have to tell me that twice. When the inventor of the Daniel Code tells you uh, something like that, uh, you'd be a fool not to heed it. So John then, uh, as, you know, as he mentioned, the, uh, the, the different type of paper trading then. So as opposed to doing this live paper trading, he said, I want you to do a year's worth of paper trading. And when he first said that, I don't think it really registered. I thought he was saying that, you know, he wanted me to do live paper trading for a year, which, you know, was kind of, uh, you know, freaking me out a little bit because, you know, I didn't want to wait a year, obviously, before I could start, you know, trading with real money, making money. And then, you know, he clarified what he was uh, looking for. And it was basically that spreadsheet that he had up as he was introducing me. So he wanted me to go back to a point in time and then start trading. So Trade Navigator has uh, something called Replay, and you can go back in their software and you can pick a market. So in this case, it was natural gas, and then pick a start date. So January 1st, 2016 was the start date, January 2nd, whatever the first trading day of 2016 was. So you don't see then anything from that point forward. So you're truly just trading that bar that's in front of you. You know, the market that's in front of you is what you have to trade. So it forces you to execute those trades. And, you know, I have to say it's about as close as you can get to live trading. Um, the key part about it, though, is that you can't cheat. You know, you can't go back and, you know, change a trade. You know, you can't say, well, gee, maybe if I'd have put a trailing stop on there, I had as big of a loss. Or maybe, you know, if I'd have... Uh, seeing that the market wasn't an uptrend, I wouldn't have taken a first profitable close, different things like that. So you have to be honest with yourself and you have to follow the system and you have to execute the trades as you would have only seeing up to that bar. So it took me um, about a week, week and a half, I guess, to progress through the whole 2016 calendar year. And the returns were amazing. You know, obviously, you know, as John said, it's a little bit different than live trading. You know, you don't have slippage things like that, but you know, it's, it's as close as uh, to live trading as I've ever seen. So you can see uh, the graph that John has up there right now. That's something that I created after the fact, because, you know, I needed something because again, I was this nervous trader and emotional trader. I needed something that I could refer back to and say, okay, you know, there are times when I'm not going to make any money. There's times when I'm going to lose money, but over a period of time, I'm going to continually make money. The other thing that it really helped me with, and, you know, John has uh, transitioned this slide to gold, which, uh, you know, I, I traded as well. And, you know, it was very similar returns, may have been a little bit better even than, uh, than what I was able to achieve on natural gas. But, you know, what I'll point out is, you know, if you look at that period, um, probably from June, maybe until October, you know, I hit a high of 35,000 and then, you know, experienced uh, several drawdowns and was down to about, you know, $30,000 in October. So there was, you know, a 
three, four month period there where, you know, I was basically flat or even losing a little bit of money. And I can tell you that if that had been my first experience live trading that market, I'd have thrown in the towel and said, you know, I'm just not cut out for this. You know, I just don't know what I'm doing. I'm making too many mistakes, mistakes, whatever. But what this graph does is even today trading live money, if I get into one of those consolidating periods or you know, a period where I'm, you know, essentially flat or even down a little bit, is I know just to stick with the system because I have yet to trade a market following the rules that John teaches you about time where over a certain period of time that I didn't make money. You know, it doesn't mean I'm going to make money every week, every month, but over time I'm going to make money. And what you're seeing on here, this equity curve, that wasn't a fluke. You know, I'm not going to tell you how my uh, live trading is going, but I will tell you that this is not a fluke. So basically, you know, this is a, a tool that I'll continue to use to this day because, you know, again, you know, I'm human, I have emotions. And when I get into those periods, you know, where, um, you know, I get a little frustrated or, you know, things aren't moving the way that, you know, in my mind that they should be moving, all I have to do is take a quick look at these and, and that gets my brain recalibrated and off I go again. So, you know, again, you know, the returns here, you know, they're going to be indicative of what you're going to do with your live trading as long as you're honest with yourself and don't go back and change trade. So that I just want to emphasize that point again. So, you know, we uh, then, you know, at a point in time, I decided that, okay, now I'm ready to start trading with real money. But I wasn't ready for the emotional aspect of trading. You know, again, that nervous trader continued to come out. You know, I had internalized the rules very quickly. But any type of a loss, it would wreck my confidence. You know, even though I would look at these graphs and, you know, Probably when I started live trading, I hadn't created these yet, so I didn't have those to refer to until a little bit later in my journey. But, you know, those losses would just weigh on me. And then, you know, I was still staring at charts all day. And, you know, John will tell you that, you know, you stare at this. He calls it those, you know, spiders moving up and down the charts all day. You're going to get an emotional response, you know fight or flight type response. So, you know, I had to get away from staring at my screen all day. And I also started to invent rules. I started to, you know, invent these things in my mind that I thought would help me to avoid losses, you know, but I was 100% honest with John on the emotions that I was going through. You know, it wasn't easy. I had to open up my soul and bear it to John and say, you know, this is what I'm going through. And I remember him saying, you know, you're an engineer, you know, you should be logical. <laughs> I would say, you know, I, uh, I thought I was a logical person as well, but uh, somewhere along the way, the, uh, the emotional side of my brain uh, kind of won that fight. So, you know, what I would do is document my live trades and then, you know, start to submit those to John. And that's something John came up with. You know, he devised that. And, you know, again, you know, John could have said, well, you know, I don't think you're cut out for this. I taught you everything you know, or, you know, you're on your own. But, you know, he wasn't going to let me fail. You know, he saw something in me that maybe I didn't even see in myself. And he would, uh, you know, even contact me. So, you know, he would call me up, shoot me an email and say, hey, it's time we should get back together and review some trades. And, you know, it was humbling at times because what I had to show him, you know, wasn't as, as good as it should have been. And uh, one time in particular, I remember John saying, you know, who taught you to trade like this? <laughs> My comment was not John Needham because I knew I was, you know, creating these rules. So what he devised here was, you know, he, he told me to start documenting my trades, very similar to the way that I documented them when I did uh, the paper trading. And then I would have to submit those trades to John every couple of weeks. And he said, you know, once you pick these markets that you're going to document and send to me, you can't change markets either. Because I still had that, you know, tendency to, to change markets, you know, too too quickly when when something wasn't working so i signed up i agreed to that and i started sending those to john and i had a little extra motivation you know to follow the rules and you know john made it pretty clear that he was going to kick my butt if i didn't follow the rules so you know i was going to make sure that uh you know that I, that I followed the rules to the t and uh you know a funny thing happened when i started following the rules my success rate skyrocketed as well as my confidence <laughs> And the other, you know, thing that John told me was quit staring at the charts all day. And to this day, that is the biggest key to my success. Other than the fact John taught me this trading system, obviously, I wouldn't have any success without that. But I quit 
just looking at the chart. So what I do now is I come up to my office, um, you know, 4.30 Eastern time, you know, see if I have any first profitable trades that I need to close out. Uh, and then I wait until the market closes. And then, you know, I spend the next maybe, you know, I've already started doing some of the analysis, so maybe another half an hour. So by 5.30, you know, I have my trades on for the next day and that's it. I don't look at the charts. I don't even come up to my office and turn on my computer because the temptation would probably be too great. I go out and do other things, you know, a lot of uh, different activities and I have that kind of time now that uh, that I'm retired that I can, you know, go do other things that I enjoy and, and don't even have that temptation to come up here and, and stare at the charts. But that was so key to my success because of that emotional response that it would elicit. If I would come up here at noon and see that I was up, you know, 300 bucks on a trade, you know, that's my money. I'm taking it. And I would, uh, you know, ring the register. And, you know, and obviously that that's not the way we trade. Um, you know, those of you that have, have taken a tutorial know that. So, you know, again, current state, I mentioned I'm finally retired after uh, multiple attempts. Um, hope to stay retired this time. Um, <laughs> that's the goal. Um, you know, something that, you know, I've, I've always wondered, maybe other people don't ask this question, but I've always thought, you know, as John would talk about, you know, Mark L and he's trying to retire and, you know, he's running different factories and so forth. I always thought, are there people out there listening who, you know, maybe think to themselves, gee, if this trading is so good, then why is he still working? You know, why isn't he just trading full time? Well, you know, John told me early on and, you know, he'll still say it from time to time. The markets will always be there for you. So I knew that, you know, my time would come when I would start doing, you know, the trading full time. But the professional opportunities that I had at the time to run these different factories, you know, I love to teach people, you know, I love to turn things around and like to be part of a team, you know, be part of things. And I was just, you know, too young before, I think, you know, to walk away from those opportunities. So, you know, they were there, they presented themselves and I took those opportunities and, you know, I accomplished a lot, you know, over those years that I'm proud of and glad glad that I took that path, but, uh, you know, I'm equally happy that I'm, I'm finally retired now and uh, trading full time. So, you know, in conclusion, you know, I would just say that John is so generous. He's generous with this time. You know, this is seven years later. So, you know, I paid John for my initial tutorial and, you know, that's all the money that I've paid him, you know, but he's still there. He still responds to every email that I send him. I can send him an email, ask a question, and he always gets back to me within a couple of days. He's told me that, you know, if I ever want to jump on a call and review some trades, that he is willing to do that. You know, I went through a period where I developed some bad habits, you know, and I was able to run those by John. He was able to, you know, quickly show me where I develop a bad habit and get me back on the, the right course. And, you know, to for him to do that after that many years just speaks to the type of person that John is. And, you know, I just have so much respect and admiration for him. You know, I want to talk about, you know, value. You know, again, I paid for this tutorial seven years ago and I still have access to John. And I challenge anyone to tell me where you can find that kind of value anywhere else. I can guarantee you that you can't. So, you know, bottom line, John's not going to let you fail. But again, you need to be honest with them. Um, I certainly would have given up on myself a number of times, but John wasn't going to let that happen. And I have to say that the money that I paid for my Daniel Code tutorial was absolutely the best money that I've ever spent. And I will always owe a debt of gratitude to John. And, you know, I've said it before and I will continue to say it. The Daniel Code and John Needham has changed my life and what a journey it's been for uh, these last seven years. And, you know, I'm just proud to be, uh, you know, part of the, the Daniel Code community and, and to be able to call John a friend. So, John, I'll turn it back over to you. Mark, that's fabulous. And thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I know you covered all sorts of areas there that obviously lots of people be saying, yeah, that's what happened to me. That, that could happen to me. And uh, by sharing that story with us, and of course, always being brutally honest, as I know you are, uh, that's been fantastic. So thank you so much. It took me a long time to get you on. I've been threatening to do it for months, uh, but uh, we've had a wonderful time with you. So thank you for that, Mark. Uh, and I'd better move on because uh, we're pretty much over time just now, folks. Uh, really quickly, um, 
This is a market being refused at the famous Daniel Code black line. Remember I talked about that last week. Just be really aware of how markets react to that black line. It's really powerful. Uh, that's what stopped the run up on gold at the moment. Doesn't mean it'll stop at the next time, but that's what stopped it right there. Uh, if you are interested in creating and trading Daniel Code time signals, folks, it is quite frankly the best trading system I ever know or have ever heard of. Uh, let me know. Email me, jneedham at the danielcode.com, uh, or you can Skype me if you'd like uh, at the address on the screen. Uh, remember, trading Daniel Code time signals is the ultimate trading methodology. And if you don't think markets turn on time, have a look at this. You've seen it before. This is two years and uh, seven months of gold with nothing on it but a simple, really basic, one standard, no deviation, 29-day time cycle. Look at it. Almost every turn of any importance at all has happened at an expiring Daniel Code time cycle. The more you know about learning time, the better trader you'll be. Okay, so uh, my challenge to you, uh, if you have any doubts about uh, that wonderful piece of trading that uh, Mark did and he talked about, um, if you do the Daniel Code tutorial and you can't trade within 10% of his number, I'll give you your money back. Uh, <laughs> I'm that confident because I know we do this for everyone. Everybody who does a tutorial, paper trades natural gas since 2016 uh, when Mark said the standard. Uh, so I know what percentage you'll get. And if you're not getting it, I know why you won't be getting it. And I can fix it. Okay. Remember, folks, paper trading has real limitations. Mark uh, touched on a couple of them. It's not the same as real trading, but it's the closest thing you can get to uh, real-time trading and the closest thing to uh, uh, finding out the probabilities uh, of any trading system. Uh, if you haven't already had a free trial, folks, uh, please uh, go ahead and do so. Any problems, contact Terry uh, at support of the danielcode.com. He'll get you fixed up. Uh, and remember, this is our disclaimer. Do not, I beg of you, trade real money until you are confident that you are a competent trader. 90% of traders lose their first bank in the first 90 days. I think that's the statistic. In fact, I think everyone loses their whole of their bank account in the first 30 days. You must take the time to learn how to trade when you're comfortable that you know how to trade. That's the time you go to real money. Until then, you keep learning. Thank you for being with me, folks. It's been wonderful to have you here. Uh, really great having uh, Mark with us. Uh, here we are, David. Uh, do many students have different charting from Trade Navigator? It's still it's on a monthly charge, no lifetime. I don't think there's a lifetime license. Uh, a number of people use um, other uh, charting programs, David, particularly, um, I can't think of what it is. That's a very, very popular one. Uh, uh, but they're people who are not using the Daniel Code. Uh, embedded signals. Uh, what we've got here from Gig, everyone is selling AI and bots. Uh, I would say this beats the bots uh, and uh, probably always will. Thank you, Gig. Uh, that's great to hear. Thanks for that, mate. Uh, and a ninja trader, wasn't it? Ninja. Ninja. Yeah, very, very popular ninja trader. Um, uh, that's the one a number of people, including Gig, uh, use. Okay, folks, thank you for being with me, and uh, thank you for going a little bit over time. I do hope you enjoyed uh, having a Mark talk to us today. Uh, it really gives you some grassroots, grassroots feelings about the sort of issues that uh, all traders go through. Uh, so uh, thank you for that. Enjoy uh, the weekend, folks, uh, and I will be looking forward to talking to you again uh, in uh, two weeks' time. Uh, if there's anything in particular you want me to talk about, please drop me an email, jneedham at thedanielcode.com, and that'll be it. Margarita says, David, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, God, didn't we have a time with all of that? Your mind uh, uh, plays tricks on you. I've forgotten about uh, all of that wonderful place in Colorado Springs, wasn't it? Boy, we had a good time. <laughs> all right, take care. Take care, folks. Yes, it was certainly fabulous. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.